Welcome to the Introduction to Mathematica screencast. In this screencast, we'll go through a couple of simple tasks using Mathematica. Mathematica is a powerful and versatile computing environment. It can be used to plot functions, solve systems of equations, integrate differential equations numerically, and analyze imported data. But we'll begin by just using Mathematica as a calculator. We can add 3 and 5 by typing 3 plus 5. To tell Mathematica to do this computation, we have to type shift and return together. Notice Mathematica returns 8, the sum of 3 and 5. Other simple numerical computations can be done like this. The power of Mathematica is really in its ability to store variables and use functions. To store a number in a variable, we can just type a equals 6. This assigns the value of 6 to the variable a. I'll type return here to go down to the next line and assign another variable, b equals 12. Notice that Mathematica didn't produce any output when I typed return. That's because commands are only executed when you type shift and return together, like this. Notice that we got output from both input lines. Now if we type a or b and hit shift return, we get output from Mathematica that shows the value of these variables. Let's assign another variable. This time, we'll suppress Mathematica's output using the semicolon. We'll type c equals 10 semicolon and hit shift and return. Notice there's no output, but we can check that the variable c was assigned the value of 10 by typing c and hitting shift return. These variables can be used to do computations. For example, if we wanted to compute a times b plus c, we just type it out and hit shift and return. We get 82 as we should. If we wanted to add b and c first, then multiply by a, we can use parentheses to dictate the order of operations. We'll get 132. If you need to tell Mathematica the order of operations in a computation, you just use parentheses as you would with pencil and paper. There are a few stored variables that might be useful. All stored variables are named starting with capital letters. For example, the square root of negative 1, i, can be called by typing capital I. Mathematica also stores the Euler number, e, and pi in the same way. Mathematica also has many built-in functions. Functions in Mathematica always start with capital letters, just as stored variables did. This helps distinguish them from functions or variables that you might write. Let's compute the sine of pi. We just type sine, which is a function, and put pi in square brackets. The stuff in square brackets, in our case the value of pi, is sent to the function, in this case the sine function. Mathematica will return the computation, which is 0. There are lots of other functions that are built in, like cosine, or log, absolute value, and even e to the x. All of these return the values that we would expect. In addition to single variables, Mathematica also supports the use of lists. Lists in Mathematica are denoted with curly brackets. We could make a list of numbers, say 1, 2, 3, or a list of variables. We assigned a, b, and c earlier. Notice that the list of variables contains the value of the variable and not the variable's name. It's also possible to make a list of strings. Strings are denoted by double quotes. For example, we could make a list of animals, say a dog, a cat, and a mouse. Lists are really important because vectors, matrices, and data tables are all represented as lists in Mathematica. In a future screencast, you will see how you can use individual items in a list to do different types of computations. 
This concludes the introduction to Mathematica screencast. Thanks.